A change is gonna come, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you're doing well, mate. I genuinely, authentically, really wholeheartedly do hope that. Welcome back to Chelsea News again. Of course, we upload multiple times here a day on the channel, and we're going to look at Simon Johnson's piece on The Athletic of an Insight. So what's going on at Chelsea? What's happening behind the scenes? We don't know. With crossing our fingers and hoping for the best. But this should offer an insight of what is going on at Chelsea and the plans, the uh, tactics, the, what he's doing to the players. We will find out now here today. I will, of course, link this article in the top of the description or in the description. Uh, it is behind the paywall, the athletic. So I'd urge you over there, go and have a look. I feel like it's my duty to. But we'll uh, we'll look through it for it today and uh, find out some of the intel. Of course, um, if you are excited by rejuvenated Chelsea, as so say if uh, rather Simon Johnson writes, Chelsea are rejuvenated, which is a big plus off the bat. If that sounds good to you, do drop a like on the video. Vote by way of thumbs up on the video, and if you yeah, like I said, uploading all the ruddy time, so do consider subscribing. And if you subscribe, and should you choose to subscribe, and if you are already subscribed, I recommend that you hit that sweet, sweet bell, baby. Just don't have any more. Sweet, sweet bell, baby. Maybe I should go in the lower register. Anyway, it's not taking Pochettino long to make an impact at Chelsea, Johnson writes. He and his squad have departed for their pre-season tour of the United States on Monday afternoon. Hey, that's yesterday, but the foundations have already been put, 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 have been put in for the trip to be positive. Mm. There's always been plenty of scrutiny when a new head coach <laughs> takes over at any club, but arguably even more so at Chelsea, given the high turnover and personnel in the dugout. Dig it on um, the Scottish there over the last two decades. That's true. Managers change all the time at Chelsea, and therefore they are scrutinised more. Whenever someone assumes the reins at Stamford Bridge, any changes uh, coming are come under particular focus. Memories of Antonio Conte banning tomato ketchup from the canteen in 2016. I remember it. Do you? His squad were just as bemused to discover seeds suddenly appear in the menu. Seeds is good. I like seeds. You should eat seeds. It's good for your digestion as well. Good healthy fats and oils. Now it's Pochettino's turn to be in the spotlight. He is obviously parallels with Antonio Conte 2016. A passionate manager coming in with strong ideals and no European football. Mm, means we're going to win the league next season, surely, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. He officially began work a fortnight ago and has had to endure the annual predicament of players returning at different times due to their involvement with their national teams um, since the conclusion of the last domestic campaign. The staggered arrivals are not ideal for any coach, but particularly a new one looking to impact his message across everyone as soon as possible. It's hard when not everyone is there, of course, yet he is trying to do so. Um, it's still coming across loud and clear. Apparently he's getting his message across. They are listening. As you would expect at the start of any pre-season, the focus has initially been on fitness. Pochettino has clearly identified this as a major weakness from last season, not just in the way Chelsea performed the games, but also the amount of injuries suffered. Well, we heard Frank Lampard say it many, many times. This club, these players just aren't fit. He recently said it again on the um, Diary of a CEO podcast. Such is the intensity of his sessions, Pochettino that is, uh, to date, that sources close to senior players who are speaking anonymous anonymously to protect their relationships with the Athletic, wah, 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 yes, they're anonymous, suggest this has already been the toughest pre-season physically for a few years. Certainly more than experienced under Thomas Tuchel. Uh, wow, okay. Standards are said to be significantly higher than that was was produced in 12 months. Uh, not that they're saying too much. I think Raheem Sterling has also gone on record or told someone that this is the fittest he's ever been and will ever be and many of the players will be the same so that's one thing kind of the bare minimum as well i know it's hard to get used to really really in great shape it's just hard to get one person in great shape let alone everyone in really great shape so i know it's like a prerequisite a bare minimum but at the same time like it's tricky you know you know it's hard so on top of the oblig, oblig i'm gonna say this word obligate oblig Obligatory. Obligatory. Yes! Ding, 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 ding. Double sessions. Mm, we had double sessions before, though, at Chelsea. There has been Pochettino's favoured Gajon test. I'm not going to read that. It's like a bleep test that increases in intensity. 
Every training session has been filmed with cameras installed at the training ground. Oh, I got, I got something in my teeth. I do. Why don't you tell me, guys? So every training session has been filmed with cameras installed at the training ground that allows the staff to review the footage of everything undertaken and, if it needs to be, go through with an individual highlight. That's cool. So this is not Big Brother kind of stuff. It's just filming people train so they can properly scrutinize it later. Like, ah! Um, Mudrick wasn't doing the left turn run back fast enough when so-and-so was doing this. Do you know what I mean? They can be very meticulous with their analysis of training. So that's good. Uh, and deliver praise if something is done particularly well. So it's not just a negative. If they've done well, they sit him down, bring him in later. Look, um, Nonny, I know I didn't say it earlier with training, but you know what? You did that so-and-so phase really, really well, mate. Well done. You know, well done. Keep doing that. Players, confidence goes up. Everybody happy. Chelsea win the Premier League. That's how it works. Another aspect of being taken more seriously is what people are doing in the gym. Yeah, so this is interesting. I'm not going to read the details of this, but like the last sort of year or so, players have been given like um, incentive or instruction rather to go to the gym and work on stuff. And not all players want to get jacked like Mudrick and um, whoever else. They go in, you know, they, they do, they sort of mope around for a bit and then they left. So they'd technically gone to the gym. Um, but this obviously doesn't fly with Pochettino, who wants them to do a proper hard workout and, you know, complete what they have been instructed to do. <clears throat> No more slacking, essentially, on the running, on the grass, running, and indeed in the gym. Everyone improving physically is just one aspect of the job. So this is interesting. Arguably, the biggest issue Pochettino needs to address is the mood in the camp in the wake of the worst Premier League sister, uh, season in Chelsea's history. Ugh. It's their fewest since the uh, competition began in terms of the points. Um, 44 points, bro. That is just sickening. He has been charged with restoring confidence and rebuilding the spirit that was notably lacking last term. Selling players and reducing the size of the squad has helped. There is a real onus now on building an environment with the individuals who really want to be at the club. Good. This is largely one of Thomas Tuchel's issues. Last The preseason before last. Yeah, got him. I'm, my mind is warped in times. He tried to do the two meetings. Who wants to stay? Who wants to go? He played the people who wanted to go. He throws out some of the people who want to be staying caused huge problems behind the scenes. To help build stronger bonds, squad members have been instructed not to sit in the same group every day. It's designed to stop cliques from forming and making everyone more together. I actually really like that. I know this sounds like school, like it's like preschool stuff, like sit with a new person every day, make new friends. But I think this is important. England's golden generation failed, you know, the Lampard, your Gerard, your Skulls, and all these people because there was cliques in the dressing room. And uh, the Liverpool would sit with the Liverpool and United, United and Chelsea and Chelsea. You know, you'd have like Lampard, JT, and Ashley Cole sitting together, and then you know some United people sitting together. And do you know what I mean? So it, you need togetherness. Obviously, you're all playing for the same crest here in the same club, but there needs to be a full integration. It is also part of the thinking that behind the highly publicized staff barbecue <laughs> Pochettino held in his first day, everyone in the senior team was built in the building was invited. Pochettino and his backroom staff mingled, getting to know everyone. Uh, again, the thought process from the outset was to unify the group. There are going to be occasions where players are going to have moments alone with personnel who are not connected to the senior staff. Obviously, if they feel happy to included, that will lead to a much better atmosphere. Good. This is like basic psychological 101 stuff. We've spoken about this. So communication has been another focal point, right, Simon, here. Pochettino has held several one-to-one -one conversations, as you would expect, to be honest, with the players to explain what he thinks of them and what he expects from them. But he is also asked for their opinions on how they feel how things have gone at Chelsea. You know, what, what went wrong last season? How do you feel like this? You know, I respect you. You're a professional. You're a man. Tell me what's happened. I like that. Their players have been made to feel they can trust Pochettino and speak freely. Good. They don't, don't need to be scared of him like Conte. And they don't feel like, you know, maybe they can walk over him like uh, Potter. There is a lot of optimism that he is a man with a plan. With, <laughs> thank God. And thank God someone's got a plan for once. And the one that which will stick. The way he came across in his first in-house interview and then his press conference with the external media. Of course, that went down well. The upbeat mantra, stressing we need to win from day one. No excuses. There's fighting talk to inspire everyone. Just reminding people that you're Chelsea. Like, you know, we are Chelsea, by the way. I know we're like in mid-table and no one wants to be here and everything's gone wrong and there's been so much transition and change and loads of players have been sold. But 
screw all that. This is this remains Chelsea Football Club. Individuals feel there is a clean slate, and now they've got everything off their chest regarding last season. I mean, I'm not sure I have, but I'm glad they have. It has been put to the past, and everyone can look forward to the future. Mm. So let's talk tactics, baby. Tactics work has begun, albeit at a minimum because the squad are at various stages of their fitness work. However, Pochettino is looking to play with a 4-2-3-1, as we have all speculated here before. Uh, this is being confirmed. Great. Pochettino is looking to play a 43 on it. I just said that. This includes pushing the fullbacks just uh, back high, just as he did with Carl Walker and Danny Rose at Spurs. He also wants to employ a creative number 10 behind the main striker. Ooh -hoo. Now, of course, we've got the fullbacks to get forward, especially if we're thinking Chilwell, Matson, probably, uh, James, Augusto, great, but a creative number 10. Now, Nkunku is more of a second striker, a like finisher of moves. A creative number 10. Does that make you think of Rayan Cherky a bit more? Mm. So, to play with a centre forward as well, on front of him. There has been concerted effort to keep the size of the pre-season tour at the same number as last year's 29, and not having too many players who like lies elsewhere you know Lukaku Aubameyang Ziyech were all asked to delay the training they're at Cobham uh, they're not part of Chelsea's plans slightly different omission of the academy duo Harvey, Harvey Fale and Amari Hutchison um, to go on loans as well Pochettino is not ignoring the youth though he's brought in of course um, returning though and he's Matson, who could stay at Chelsea Bashir Humphreys who I think will probably go on loan Although, let's address the fact how, um, you know, I did speak about it a little bit in uh, this morning's video, the earlier video this morning about Wesley Fofana's injury could be bad. You know, he's a favourite of mine and Fabrizio Romano even saying that Chelsea could consider going into the market. You know, we've got five centre-backs, so surely you just play Trevo Chalaba. And this, he's not fancied by Pochettino, but Trevor Chalaba, Thiago Silva on the right, Levi Carwell, Badish Shield on the left. Surely that's enough. No? You tell me. Comments below. There is still a possibility they will secure transfers on their return from the US, but their inclusion in the squad is a reward from impressing Pochettino so far. That's good. Uh, uh, so, yeah, so Matson really has impressed Pochettino. That's huge. I really think he could be a, a big player um, to deputize behind Chilwell, maybe even challenge him at times. Um, other academy players include Mason Burstow, striker, of course, uh, Gilchrist, Cassidy, and Lewis Hall. Lewis Hall, you'd almost be certain, would be kept in the squad, especially seeing as we've got so little midfielders now. Cesare Cassidy, despite going on uh, this tour, I think he'll go on loan, and it's most likely he will go on loan to... Uh, Leicester City, which we've said before, would be a good loan for him because he'd be challenging to win the league rather than challenging to stay up in terms of a lower a lower table Prem loan. You know, Leicester will challenge to win the championship. That kind of mentality, that level of club, that training ground, that stadium, I think that would suit him better to see if he can transition to Chelsea. But as things stand, of course, he's on loan. Obviously, um, this should all come with notes, of course, and Chelsea have not yet played a game. The squad is far from complete uh, and need at least two midfielders, one probably being uh, Cassidy. Um, uh, Cassidy? Moises Caicedo, <laughs> excuse me. Of course, we, we need to replace Kante, Loftus-Cheek, Kovacic, and Jorginho, and even Mason Mount, really. I know Havertz is a sort of attacker, but sort of a midfielder still. There's a reality that any permanent appointment would be seen as a blessing after the sackings of... Uh, sorry, I've skipped a bit there. Anyway, point being, there's a lot of uh, work to be done and transfers still. There's also appeared to be a similar feel-good factor in the early weeks of pre-season 12 months ago. But it soon emerged things were not as they initially seemed. And yes, we found out later that that that, that uh, pre-season was a disaster. So get excited, be happy, but temper your expectations, I'd say. But this is different. You know, Tuchel was an emotional guy. Um, he had so much to deal with. The club was sold, the Super League, the Lukaku drama, and then his own personal stuff going on with Tuchel. There is some also reports that haven't and probably won't surface regarding him and his time at Chelsea and his dismissal. But that's the past and we shall leave it there. Pochettino doesn't have any of that baggage. It's a fresh start. The new owners really want to give him the fertile, soft ground to develop a new Chelsea to grow success. And uh, I believe that we were probably doing all the right stuff to achieve that. But yes, even if we sign Moises Caicedo, another midfielder may come. 
maybe an attacker. It does look like Kepa is the number one goalkeeper. The f not, I mean, the fact how he's got that graphic up outside Stamford Bridge, just little things like that. They've taken away the players that aren't going to be there and they've put up the new ones that are going to be there. Um, so it makes you think, yeah, Kepa's the number one. Anyway, there's lots to get into uh, in future videos of all that stuff. Let me know what you think. It does sound good. The tactics of a 4-2-3-1, the players being the fittest they've ever been and the good atmosphere all sounds good to me if you feel like that's good too please do drop a like and leave your comments down below i thank you for subscribing and hitting the bell and obviously i upload all the ruddy time so i look forward to seeing you on the next one all right ciao